I was brought up by one of the world's most famous interviewers. He's even had a Hollywood film made about him. And I want to do the impossible. I want to follow in my father's footsteps and be the next big interviewer. It's a bold move, but I'm not doing it because of dad. I'm doing it because of me. And here's why. I love asking questions and I love listening to what people have got to say. But more than that, I want to get under the skins of some of the world's most interesting and famous people, from celebrities to sports stars to politicians. The modern chat show is as much about the host as it is the guest. I'd like to put the focus back onto the guest. Challenging them to open up more and getting them to reveal things you never thought you'd see. And here's a few clips of me trying to do just that. <laughs> It's also there as <laughs> Sneak in and perhaps hide underneath it. And the respect of the comments around the world. <laughs> what kind of mistakes do men like me make when they're trying to chat up someone someone like you? You're so funny. You can't make mistakes, Well, Just be <laughs> Just, I, I, think, I think a thing women like, I've noticed this, is they love being watched. The other part which you're, you're probably more famous for and you nail every time is Patsy, of course, in Ab Fab. She's a fun-loving alcoholic with a wicked sense of humour. It must have been a great fun part it's a sensational part to play. Did that aspect mean that a political leader had to be interviewed by David Frost in order to get the sort of seal of, of approval, as it were? Well, there was no reason not to. I mean, there are some people that political leaders do not wish to be interviewed by because they're egoists and the interview's about them, or because they ask foolish questions. And then there are others, like David, who will ask the questions that need to be asked. Well, so John, it's been an absolute privilege. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a joy, Wilfred. Wolf, your next story. Yeah, I was going to touch on the, uh, the closure of, of BBC Three, not the closure, the move of it to, to uh, the internet to iPlayer. And I think everyone's touched on the fact that this is a, a great shame. It's been the breeding ground for new talent and, and new shows. What were your father's reflections on the changing world of television? Because he moved to Al Jazeera towards the end and everything was moving very, very fast. Modern technology, I have to say, wasn't, wasn't his forte. And uh, he was, uh, I always think it's funny, he was a a pioneer in the world of television for 50 years, but he couldn't actually really manage to turn on a television set himself. <laughs> you don't do that many interviews. Why is that? Part of the mystique of being a, an illusionist? No, so a lot of TV interviews, you just, you know, someone's plugging something, they have to entertain, and the interviewer normally is, is shows just as much about, normally more about him than it is about the guest. So, um, yeah, at the moment, I think it's not a really interesting area on TV. Going on to your personal life, you, yeah. you do like to keep things quite private, um, so much so I'm not sure many people would know that you are atheist and, mm. and that you are gay. Is that a decision? I'm a gay theist. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right. Oh, I haven't thought about that. Neither had I, uh, just then. Is that a conscious decision on your part, to keep those things private? Uh, no, I think the atheism, I'm actually quite... I'm actually quite perfectly open about both of them. I think you have to be. What, the other sort of celebrity side of, of being a footballer, is that something you embrace, you enjoy? Yeah, I, I loved it. You know, like going on your dad's show. You know, that, that was ace, you know. But the thing I remember about that is that having to walk down the steps, and it's like live on TV, and there was about 100 steps coming down. You know, so it was like really nerve-wracking. Well, but you do know this is obviously going out live as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm all right now. I've done a few. <laughs> <laughs> How do you replace that buzz, that that drive you used to get on a Saturday afternoon? You never will. And, and, but I can honestly say I have not missed football one inch since I retired. What is it about football that, that brings out the worst in people? Money. The money is just getting bigger and bigger and a lot more people resent that. David, I've been the, uh, the luckiest Arsenal and England fan <laughs> in, in, the, in the world today to sit opposite you for half an hour. So thank you very much for your time. Brilliant. <laughs> So I'd love to meet you and tell you more about why I think I can be your next presenter. And I look forward to you interviewing me.